What's that off yonder in the sky? Is it a ho -O? A Deoxys? No! It's a brand new series here on Planet Poke called Protistamon. Okay, now what is a protist, what is a protista, and why have I made it into a pack of digital collectible Pokemon-esque cards? Well, I'm in Bio 102 right now in college, and part of the test that I just took was memorizing these organisms. And it's really interesting when you get down to studying them, because looking through the microscope, a lot of them look like Pokemon-type creatures. Look at that. Is, is that part of a, a Kabuto pre-evolution? I don't know. And then I realized, well, how is it that I know over 600 Pokemon names? And, you know, on top of that, I know some basic stats about them. I know evolution and others I know more about when I do EV sets on them. But how did I remember them? Well, repetition. Repetition in collecting the cards, repetition in seeing them in the games and in the TV show. Every time that you notice that character, it gets solidified in your mind and that's how you inevitably remember the new generations of Pokemon that come out. So I thought, why not apply it to biology? Why not apply it? But especially with these crazy names, Amoeba Proteus, that one's uh, probably more recognizable. It's the unicellular unicont, and unicont is the super group of this organism. Uh, it's uh, an amoeba zone, and it's a gymnamoeba. These are all things, all terms that uh, are vital on the test. What they'll end up asking you if you're in Bio 102 is categorist categories um, and characteristics of each section of each supergroup. So the supergroup here is the Unicons, uh, the phylum is Gymnamoeba, and Amoeba Zone is a subgroup under the supergroup. So, so you see why I decided to organize them in the form of cards because it's like you've got the type, you've got, you know, some basic attacks for this one, brain-eating disease. Uh, this organism here, you wouldn't be able to see it because it is unicellular, um, although it looks like de blob or something like that. Uh, I believe a boy in California jumped into, cannonballed into a freshwater pond and got one of these little things up its nose, up his nose. And uh, they do this thing called phagocytosis, which is essentially cellular eating. And uh, they gloop, gloop, gloop around whatever they're going to eat. And those little dots that look almost if they are uh, holographic specks embedded within that organism, those are food vacuoles. So that's the food that it's eating. And went up the nose and straight to his brain. And uh, that's why I put the brain eating disease on there. And they move through cytoplasmic streaming. That's what that is right there. Uh, these are all characteristics that if you're in biology, you should be probably familiar with. If not, uh, it's my pleasure to take the time to scroll through these cards. That's why I made them to make sense. Clamidomonas. Uh, this is an interesting one. I didn't see a phylum on the sheet. It's a photosynthetic organism. It's unicellular can both bud off of itself and also do sexual reproduction for genetic variety. And the reason that is good, the reason that you get all these different evolutions, see that's another cool thing, is that even the evolution element of uh, Pokemon can be seen greatly in the biology realm. Uh, it's believed that this organism or uh, an ancient ancestor of this one had endosymbiosed some other organism when it ate it, and basically endo is, is inner and symbiosis is a uh, working relationship, one benefiting the other, they both benefit each other. And they thought, well, it seems as though, how did this thing get chloroplast? It had to eat some other organism in order to make that happen. So I'm still in the, uh, I guess you could say, ground level of biology, although it is 102. And I'm not too certain how valid endosymbiosis is, but if they were mentioning it in the books, I'm supposing it's important. So that's how these things that you see here probably got their photosynthetic ability. But uh, it's unknown. They could have evolved it completely separately from endosymbiosis. They could have just had some kind of gene variance. And gene variance is important because that's how these organisms come about, all these different species, us included, you know, it's all thanks to genetic variants. So here's something interesting, is these little guys, which are actually visible, 
Although they are uh, unicellular in nature, you can see each little packet of cell is coming together and forming this colony, which uh, in Biology 102 we talk about a lot, especially uh, in bacteria. This is protist, which if you don't know what a protist is, I didn't even go over that, but it's pretty much the first basic organism that has a nucleus in it. It's got an envelope that protects its genetic material, so it's kind of like having your recipe book in a vault. So you make sure that the pages never burn and you don't lose any data on it. That's the essential purpose of a nucleus. But uh, there are things in the future I'll talk about that does penetrate the nucleus and will affect you. Uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> if they've got a nucleus. But that's what the protists are. They are the first true nucleide organisms and uh, it's believed that every other organism from there have evolved from some sort of protist. Uh, so, although you can't see them one cell at a time, when they do group together like that, they actually form golden algae. And now I'm sure you guys have seen pond scum, and that's these guys. Big surprise, right? I bet you thought pond scum was some kind of plant. Is not. Oh, and mixtrophic, that's a word you probably don't know. Mixtrophic is a mix between the two main modes of getting energy. And uh, I guess there's a third one, if you consider uh, saprophiles, which are things that love dead material, like mushrooms. Uh, but the other ones would be auto and hetero. Basically, auto is you make your food yourself, like automatic, and plants are known to do that. Also, these chrysophytes being uh, photosynthetic as they are, they can be autotrophic too. But mixotrophic means that they're heterotrophic and autotrophic. Hetero means you have to obtain your energy from some other organism. So pretty cool that it can do both. It's uh, versatile in that and the reason that it's evolved in this sort of way uh, ideally is because of its environment. You have to adapt and if there's no food around, if there's not enough sunlight, but there are other organisms which you can take their nutrients from, then you better hope you can process them. Ooh, the diatoms. These are really fantastic under a microscope. If you ever get the chance to look at these, or if you've ever heard of something called diatomaceous earth, that's what these organisms are. And the cool thing about these protists is, um, you know, they also do photosynthesis. You'll find that uh, when you go through these cards, and if you want to collect them for yourself, you can click on the link in the description below, add me on Facebook, and then the photos are all hosted there. Uh, but what you start to notice is that the chrome alveolates, um, at least the stromenopile side, because we're going to get to later cards, probably not in this episode, I'm going to keep it to five cards per pack, um, but in the later episodes you're going to see that there's the subgroup alloveolates, which are these kind of squishy, membrane-bound, sac-like creatures, and uh, the stromenopiles, which are also in chrome alveolates supergroup. But uh, what tends to be the case with these stromenopiles, uh, even this one too, is that they, they are really more the algae type species. So this is algae, uh, this is what a lot of people consider to be phytoplankton. Um, you know, it's, a, it's another basic nub on the, the food chain that without it, uh, we at the top would fail everything in the ocean if, if that tends to die because there's not enough diatoms or there's not enough chrysophytes to go around then things will get hungry things will die and it will affect the top of the food chain even us uh, what's really cool and what makes them very special underneath the microscope that first of all they kind of look like snowflakes right they got each unique shapes um, you know they can come in a variety of shapes but what really gives them away under the microscope is the silica it's uh, got walls that make it have these cool rigid like shapes these structures that keep stability going in the organism and when they die and everything fades away the only thing that's left is their silica skeleton so if you've ever picked up a piece of rock or earth that looked like it had uh, you know some striation marks in it some um, maybe some lines and, and a clustering of things and shapes and patterns and you think, wow, how could that happen? What, what made this imprinted on this piece of rock? Well, most likely it's the diatoms and you're looking at diatomaceous earth and that's somewhat of a fossil almost, uh, except it's, it's just their skeletons that leave behind the imprints. And uh, another thing important to remember on a test is laminarin is the glucose polymer of food storage 
that these organisms derive. And the last card for today is the Dictio Stellium Discoidium. And uh, again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing these. Uh, you're going to have to get over mispronunciations, people, because especially in science, it really depends on the person's accent. I've heard people say niche and niche. Um, I've heard people flip-flop between the very term within the same sentence. It's a bit more awkward if they do that. But uh, people have their own ways of pronouncing things, and especially when you're in the lower levels of bio, like I am, the just starting out, getting a grasp on what else is our world comprised of. I mean, you know, most of these things you've never even seen before in your life. That's why I figure, well, it, it's pretty much Pokemon. I've never seen these. They're practically invisible to the naked eye unless they do this sort of grouping together thing, which is uh, exactly what Dictio Stellium Discoidium does. But especially when you're just starting out, you have to make these make sense to you. That's why I made Pokemon Protista cards and decided to see if it would help anyone else because I personally remember so much about Pokemon thanks to the collections that I had. Little did I know was I educating myself back at the time reading all those cards. But now I know and now we can use this to our own advantage. So if you want to say the name differently, go right ahead. If you've got a mnemonic memory device that helps you grasp what this organism is and what it does, then be my guest. Uh, the Unicons of Amoeba Zoan, um, well, I'm not even going to tell you how I remember that, but uh, let's just say that uh, most of the Unicons, and especially the Amoeba Zoans, do some not nice things, like uh, a breaking down of tissue. We already saw the, the Gym Amoeba phylum of uh, the Amoeba Proteus, which is that brain-eating organism I was talking about in the first place. So uh, you can imagine what I surmise Unicons to be. Uh, but it's looked at this particular organism as a model for multicellularity because this thing has a very interesting lifestyle. Uh, you can see very faintly that there are specks gathered all around the base of this little globular uh, kind of like holdfast thing. And what that is, is these little aggregates of this organism coming together, and don't ask me how they know how to come together, to make more of themselves. It's very interesting, you know, it, you have numerous uh, unicellular organisms, they come together making this colony of themselves which tend to be clones, that's another interesting thing about this organism is it produces asexual fruiting bodies. Usually in biology you see fruiting bodies and you think sexual. But with this organism that's not the case. You've got clones coming together to make a new batch of clones and they keep doing this and they just keep moving along and uh, you could actually see them sometimes as goo. If you ever see in the forest that kind of slimy stuff on the, the forest floor, that's why I put slime mold up at the top there, uh, it could be this organism. Kind of very difficult to tell if you don't see any of the fruiting bodies, uh, but that could be these little guys coming together on moist surfaces to form this and later go on to make more colonies of themselves. So very fascinating. I mean, it's, it's an incredible study of how communities form, of why we're multicellular, what the benefits of all that are, because of course we are not only multicellular, but as humans we are multi-organismed. Yeah, that's a might be a shock for you, but we've got our own microbiomes in our guts and all around our bodies, uh, places where good bacteria live, and uh, there's definitely things that you can do to improve and uh, degrade that kind of situation, things like diet, health, and, and all the above, but you know, it's, it's interesting to see that each level of the biological taxons that we explore has this sort of grouping together of organisms. It seems as though, uh, you know, divided we fail, together we succeed. That kind of notion really is true because all the organisms can complete so much more of the desired tasks in biology like eating, like reproducing, that tends to be the main goals of every organism. And uh, it can do it so much swifter, a lot more efficient if we group together. And clearly we can see that in a human example for cities. So much commerce and so much exchange is done in a city 
Uh, a lot is done and it can be feeling as though it's a, a hive mind situation because there's so many different people going in all different directions, going with all different goals, but somehow it all congeals together so that you get this fruiting bud and uh, the sweet success of your efforts being symbiotic are secured. So I'm Dio Gen Z. I really hope that you enjoy this uh, a lot nerdier series than uh, what Planet Poke is used to premiering. But this is truly for the purpose of education. So I understand if this doesn't help you today, but if you are a scientist and you're looking and going into the biological realm, uh, these organism cards, these protistamons, will help you out considerably. They have for me. They've gained me a, a 94 on my practical, and I've yet to take the unit test because Hurricane Sandy is a bitch. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that semester. But for now, I'm Dio Gen Z. Remember to check out my channel, and go ahead and add me on Facebook if you want to collect these cards for yourself. And leave lots of comments. I need to have the feedback on what you guys feel on these odd organisms that remain out of the limelight because our eyes are too imperfect to observe them. <laughs>